Fifty Nine was still with the moon casting a soft glow through the window of the mill and Michelle's bedroom. The clock on the wall struck midnight, but the couple was far from ready to sleep. Michelle was nestled comfortably in Zimin's arms, her head resting on his chest as they lay in bed. The ambience was intimate with the dim lights setting a romantic tone. Zimin gently stroked Michelle's hair, the fingers tracing patterns on her back. He leaned down and whispered in her ear, He's very slow and seductive, baby. It's late. Why don't we enjoy this night together? Michelle looked up at him with a playful pout. Jimin, have some shame. It's been three nights in a row now. Can't you let me sleep for once? Jimin smirked, his eyes twinkling with mischief. Darling, who told you that we should only have dash occasionally? Have not you heard that song? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, <laughs> Friday, day, Saturday, Sunday, week. Every hour, every minute, every second, you know, night after night, I've been <laughs> loving you in seven days in a week. Michelle could not help but burst into laughter at his cheeky reference. Okay, okay, I'm ready for tonight as well. With a mysterious grin, Jimmy leaned over and switched off the Bessai lamp. Plunging the room into darkness, the only light now came from the faint glow of the moon flitting through the curtains. Michelle lay back on the bed, her heart racing in anticipation. Jimmy climbed over her, his body hovering just above hers. Their breasts mingled as he slowly leaned down, capturing her lips in a passionate kiss. The kiss even becoming more urgent as Jimmy's hands jumped over Michelle's body. Igniting a fire within her, within her, his fingers skillfully touched the curves of her face before sliding under her top, cursing her skin. Michelle arched her back, her hands gripping Jimin's shoulder as he continued to explore her body. Jimin's lips left a trail of kisses down her neck. Making her shiver with pleasure, he nipped at her collarbone before his hand moved to the hem of her top, pulling it over her head and tossing it aside. Jimin's gaze darkened with desire as he took in the sight of Michelle's dashed skin. He leaned down his lips in finding her dash. His hands cursing the others, Michelle moaned softly, her fingers tingling in his hair as she hugged him closer. Just as they were lost in the movement, the shrill ring of Jimin's wound cut to the air. Picking the spell, Jimin groaned in frustration, pulling away slightly. Who the hell is calling it this or? He glanced at the phone screen, his gross throwing when he saw the name, the Hing flushing on the display. It's the Hing, he muttered, contemplating whether to answer. Jimin hesitated, his finger hovering over the decline button. This guy always called at the wrong time, he grumbled, adding the call and the tossing the phone aside. He was about to return to the interrupted movement when the phone rang again. Michelle placed a hand on Jimin's chest, her voice gentle yet insistent. Jimin answered it, it might be important if he's calling twice. With a sigh, Jimmy relented. Fine, but the better have a good reason for interrupting us. He picked up the phone and answered it. He's too slightly annoyed. What is it, Taehyung? But the voice on the other end was not Taehyung instead. It was a deep, unfamiliar voice. Is this Jimin? Are you a friend of Taehyung? Jimin annoyance quickly turned to concern. Yes, I'm his friend. Who is this? And why do you have this phone? The man on the other end of the line paused for a moment before delivering the news that made Jimin's dash run cold. Your friend has been in an accident. We have put him in an ambulance and are taking him to XXX Hospital. You need to get there as soon as possible. Jimin's heart drove. What? How serious is it? How did it happen? There is no time for details now. Just get to the hospital. Jimin's hand shook as he entered the car, his mind racing with fear and worry. He turned to Michelle, who had been watching him closely, her eyes filled with concern. Michelle, get up, we need to go to the hospital. The Hink had an accident. Michelle face piled as she scrambled to her feet. Oh my god, is he okay? Is he serious? I don't know, we have to get there now. Jimin's voice was tight with anxiety. As he quickly threw on his clothes, his mind still reeling from the news. 
the two of them rushed out of the bedroom. Their earlier romantic mood completely shattered the drive to the hospital felt like an eternity with Jimin's mind racing through worst case scenarios. Um, he could not lose his best friend, not like this. When they arrived at the hospital, they hurried inside searching for any information. A nurse directed them to the emergency room where a doctor informed them that the thing was in a surgery. The doctor faced first grief as he explained the severity of the Hing's injuries. Jin felt a lump in his throat who should inform Vine as well. He said his voice thick with emotion. Michelle nodded, her eyes filled with concern. Yes, but he will be devastated. To hear about the accident, maybe you should go to her place and bring her here yourself. Jimmy knew she was right. Van would be in a state of panic if she heard the news over the phone. Okay, I will go. Take care and stay strong. I will be back as soon as I can. Meanwhile, at home, Van was packing the Van was pacing the living room, her anxiety growing with each passing minute. The clock had already struck midnight and Tihing was still not home. It was unusual for him to be this late and his phone had been switched off for hours. Van had tried calling him multiple times but each time it went straight to voicemail increasing her worry. Her heart was pounding in her chest a million thoughts turning through her mind. Has something happened to him? Was he in trouble? She had not even touched her dinner. To an excuse to eat, she kept glancing at the clock, hoping to hear the sound of the door opening any second now. Finally, there was a knock at the door. Van's heart lit it with hope. Maybe the Hing had finally come home. She rushed to the door, her hands trembling as she opened it, but instead of the Hing, she found Jimin standing there, his face pale and tense. Jimin, what are you doing here? Van asked, her voice trembling with fear and confusion. Jimin swallowed hard, trying to keep his voice steady. Van, you need to come with me. Where was going on? Where is the young? Van's heart was racing even faster now, a sense of dread settling in the pit of her stomach. Jimin took a deep breath, trying to find the right words. Just please come with me. I will take you to the young. Despite the fear gnawing at her inside, Van nodded and followed Jimin to the car as they drove. Her mind raced with questions. Why was Jimin being so vague? Why was not taking with him? And most importantly, why were, the, why were they heading towards the hospital? When Jimin finally parked in front of the hospital, Van felt her heart drop. Jimin, why are you? Why are we at the hospital? What happened to Taehyung? Jimin skipped on the steering wheel, tightening his knuckles, turning white. Why thing was in an accident? Double seemed to stop spinning for a moment as Van stared at Jimin, her eyes wide with shock. No, 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 that can't be. Is he, is he okay? Jimin struggled to find the right words, but he could not hide the worry in his voice. They are operating on him now. I don't know the full extent of his injuries yet. Tears welled up in Vine's eyes as she bowed a trembling hand to her mouth. Oh God, the young. Jimin quickly goes out of the car and moved to Vine's side, gently guiding her out. Come on, Vine, you need to be strong for him. He needs you. As they walked into the hospital, Vine's leg felt like they would give out beneath her. Her mind was a wild mind of emotions, fear, sadness, and guilt for all the times she had been angry with the young over trivial matters. What if she never go to tell him how much she loved him? Inside the hospital, the atmosphere was tense, the style, white walls, and the smell of antiseptic. Antiseptic did nothing to soothe Van's frail nerves. They quickly found Michelle in the waiting room. Her eyes fell from crying. The moment Van saw her, the tears she had been holding back broke free. Michelle's Van's voice cracked as she collapsed into her friend's arms, sobbing uncontrollably. Michelle held Vine tightly, trying to offer her some comfort. To her own heart was heavy with worry. She's going to be okay, Vine. He's strong. He will make it to this. But Vine could not stop the flow of tears. I can't lose him, Michelle. I can't. Michelle continued to hold Vine, stroking her hair as she tried to soothe her. You won't lose him, Vine. He's going to be okay. We just have to be patient and wait for the doctors. As they waited, every minute felt like an hour. 
Vine was trembling tears were streaming down her face as Michelle tried her best to comfort her. The night had taken a toll on her nerves and the thought of the young lying in the operation room, fighting for his life was unbearable. Afterward fell like earth, the doors to the operating room finally opened and the doctor emerged. Ting was on his feet in an instant, rushing over to the doctor. Doctor, how is the young? Please tell me he's okay. Jimmy nods his voice laced with desperation. The doctor sighed, looking at the very faces before him. The operation is still ongoing. I'm sorry, but I can't give you a definite answer yet. He sustained several injuries and we are doing our best. The doctor's words only deepened and anxiety when felt her knees buckle and Michelle had to hold her up. The night dragged on with every passing second weighing heavily on their hearts. The hospital hallways was eerily quiet, the silence only broke by a wine's occasional sobs. Two agonizing hours passed before the doctor finally came out. This time their expressions were more composed. Jimmy stood up quickly, his heart pounding. The patient is out of danger now, but uh, the doctor said he soon held a note of caution. But Vine's voice was shaky as he stepped forward, clutching onto every word. The doctor looked at her sympathetically, but his legs sustained severe damage. It will take time for them to heal, and he won't be able to walk for several months. The words hit Vine like a fetal train. Her legs gave way and she collapsed to the floor, tears are dimming down her face. The thought of the young being unable to walk tore at her heart. Jimin too was visibly shaken, his usual calm demeanor cracking under the weight of the news. Michelle died to be so strong, comforting both Vine and Jimin, but it was clear that she was struggling as well. The night fell endless. The three of them stayed in the hospital, unable to sleep, each lost in their own thoughts and fears. The waiting was torturous, but they refused to leave this breath for any update on the young's condition. As dawn broke, the doctor came to them again. The young is awake now. You can go see him. Without wasting a second one, Jimin and Michelle rushed to the young's room. The sight that greeted them was heartbreaking. The young lay in the hospital bed, his body connected to several machines, a bandage wrapped around his head, and his usually vibrant face, pale and weak. The room was filled with the soap peeping of monitors, and the trial scent of the hospital hung in the air. Van felt her heart shatter at the sight. She could not hold back her tears as she ran to his side, feeling to her knees beside the bed. As she came closer, Ting's eyes opened, and the moment he saw her, tears welled up in his eyes as well. Why? Ting's voice was hoarse, barely a whisper, but the guilt in his eyes was unmistakable. I'm really sorry. Before he could say anything more, Van threw her arms around him, her body shaking with sobs. Don't say that, please don't say that. I'm not mad at you, Ting. I'm just, I was so scared. I thought I would lose you. Ting tugged her back as tightly as he could despite his weakness. Why, please don't leave me. I swear, I will never hurt you again. Just don't leave me. Van pulled back just enough to look into his eyes, her arm filled with tears. Don't talk like that, thinking I'm not going anywhere. I'm here and I'm not mad at you. I just want you to get better. She held him close again. Her so filling the room, things that rocked her hair gently, trying to calm her down, even though he was fighting back tears of his own. The pain in his leg was unbearable, but the fear of losing wine was far worse. Jimmy and Michelle stood at the doorway watching the scene unfold with tears, and in their eyes, Jimin, usually the strong one, could not hold back his emotion anymore. He approached the hink. Oy, why are you crying? Tehing tried to joke, but the tears in his eyes betrayed his true feelings. Jimin Choki said, wiping away his tears, I told you so many times to drive carefully. Tehing, what if, what if something had happened to you? What would I have done? Tehing managed a weak smile, reaching out to squeeze Jimin's hand. I am not going anywhere, Jimin. Don't worry about me. I am too stubborn to leave you guys so easily. They all shared the bitter sweet laugh, the tension in the room easing slightly. Despite the circumstances, being together brought them some comfort while still holding things and felt a small glimmer of hope for the first time that night. As the hours passed, they stayed at the side, taking and sharing stories to lift his spirits. 
We shall ever the utmost to make sure to keep the moonlight cracking jokes and making everyone smile. They even managed to share a meal together, something simple, but it felt like a feast given everything they had been through. For a brief moment, it was as if the nightmare had passed and they could breath again, thing despite the pain and the uncertainty of what lay ahead felt a warmth in his heart and was not mad at him anymore, and that was all that mattered to him. But deep down, he could not shake the sadness that lingered. The doctors would echo in his mind. He would not be able to walk for months. The thought of being so helpless, of not being able to stand on his own two feet, was terrifying. Finally, as sleep began to claim them, being whispered, Why, thank you for not giving up on me. Why looked up at him, her eyes soft. And full of love, I will never give up on you, the young, no matter what happens, we will get through this together. With those words, they were drifted off to sleep, holding on to the hope that tomorrow would be a better day. And as the night enveloped them in its quiet embrace, they found solace in knowing that, despite everything, they still had each other to be continued.